of God. And uh, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very good song because, man, God's good to you, right? Yeah. Even when we don't deserve it, He's still good to us, right? So sing along with us. If someone would have told me how good my life would get, I would have called me crazy, cause I couldn't see again. From a story going nowhere to where I stand now, I'm smiling cause I know there's only one way how.
Special request, this is for you, Hank.
his son not sparing sent him to die I scarce can take it in that on that cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin then sings my soul
I don't know, sometimes you can, as the years go by, you can feel like your life's winding down, but there's nothing like the Holy Spirit to wind it back up. This song says, I just began to live. How about you? Amen. Praise God. Everything. Everything. 
by prayer. Now say by prayer. By prayer. And supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And that's a conjunction. That means verse 7 is connected to verse 6. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Our message tonight, number six in the series, How Do Christians Handle Stress, entitled Overcoming Stress Through Prayer. The greatest way to overcome stress is through prayer. Would you bow your head to me? Lord, we thank you. For the midweek service, I thank you, Lord, for the joy that we've had together, for the prayer requests. There are great needs that we made, but at the same time we had praise reports and thanksgiving was given. That's the way we make our requests, Lord Jesus. I know that you're moving. I thank you for the miracles that you've done, for the miracles that are on the way. I thank you for this opportunity to share the Word of God. I do not take it lightly. I didn't come to hold these people for an extended period of time and not do them any good. But, Lord, we take one of the most glorious and grand subjects we possibly could take. Help us, Lord Jesus, to handle it the right way. You take over. Let it sit at your feet. We'll praise you forever, Lord, in Jesus' name, for Christ's sake. And they all sing. Amen. You may be seated. The word for careful in verse number 6 of this text is anxious. Be anxious for nothing, he said. Literally translated, that word means to be pulled in two different directions. Uh, have you ever felt that you were pulled in two different directions? Maybe in more than two different directions. Now you can say amen again. Medical experts say, those that have given case study after case study, they sum up all their cases, psychiatrists and psychologists. They say the number one reason for anxiety is the feeling of inadequacy. Think about it. I'm going to be slow with this because I want you to think about that. Really, the only thing that causes you stress is the feeling of inadequacy. I'm not going to have enough time. I'm not going to have enough money. I'm not going to have enough resources of any kind. I don't have enough skill. I don't have enough need. I am inadequate. Maybe I don't have enough love. So what's the answer to that? Since that, would you agree with me? I, I don't often agree with psychologists and psychiatrists, but they say according to the people that they examine and treat, the major cause of stress is a feeling of inadequacy. So how do we help that? God is adequate. He never comes up short. The word that he said himself was sufficient. God is sufficient. He's more than enough. He has the recess, recesses. Access it. And access to that comes through prayer. That's why he said in Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, I would that men pray everywhere. Pray without ceasing and faint not. Always pray and not to faint. That's what Jesus said about prayer. Do not give up in prayer. Prayer is meant to be both remedial and preventative. I told you at the beginning of this series there will be a lot of teaching about how to prevent stress and then somehow to relieve it after you've got it. Prayer is the answer to both situations. It will prevent stress from coming, and it will relieve stress after it comes. Let's make a key statement. While there are many wonderful principles in the New Testament on how to avoid stress, we've looked at them and we will continue. However, Paul's words in Philippians chapter 4 bring them all together into one passage. There really is a system of prayer that relieves stress. Now, I haven't come down to, to bog down your prayer life tonight. I don't want to overcomplicate it. I'm not talking about complicating your prayer time and your time with God. But your approach to prayer must be systematic. You see, we're human beings. Everybody is really not a human being, right? That means we need a system. We won't subscribe to anything that we don't have steps to take. If we think of all God's principles in His Word as being abstract, we'll never put them into practice. So this is the way you approach prayer. There really is a system of prayer that relieves stress. We'll look at six principles that will, when implemented in our prayer lives, keep us sitting at the feet of Jesus, which is indeed the best place to be. You can say amen right there. Amen. Jesus said of Mary, she had chosen that good part, sitting at the feet of Jesus. Martha, however, was careful, full of care, burdened about many things. 
It's your choice. I want to choose that good part, don't you? Amen. Here it is. Stress relieving prayer is dependence upon the Lord. It's developing a lifestyle. It's declaring our love. It's drawing a list. It's displaying our loyalty. And it's delivering a legacy. Yeah. That's what the specific stress relieving prayer is all in this text. First of all, stress relieving prayer is dependence upon the Lord. Remember that major cause, and we all agreed on it, with the experts for anxiety, the feeling of inadequacy? What's going to remedy that in verse 5? The Lord is at hand. Amen. He's right there. That's the reason you can have relief from your stress and that feeling of inadequacy. Jesus said in John chapter 15 and verse 5, Without me, ye can do nothing, but we're not without him. Amen. He said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. You don't have to take one step. And coming to Him in complete dependence is the greatest way to receive of Him. You see, as I said, most of the time we leave out verse number 5 because it sounds kind of scary. Right? Look at verse 5 again. Let your moderation be known to the old man. The Lord is at hand. Now that's a pretty good verse taken by itself. I think moderation should be shown yeah. in all things. However, look at the context. What is the subject here? Stress relief. He's telling us immediately, and I've told you before, verse numbers we'll put in later. He says, let your moderation be known to men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. Since God is with us, dial back that stress. Moderate your stress. Yeah. Turn that stress dial down because the Lord is right there. Amen. In other words, God is saying, don't be anxious. I'm here. Right? How many times have you had to tell your little children, Violet and Levi and so forth, Mommy's here, Mommy's here, Daddy's here, it's okay. That's exactly what God is telling you. Amen. You can cut back on the anxiousness because He's right here. Yes, he Prayer reinforces that like nothing else. Amen. Prayer is an outward expression of an inward dependence. And I want to do this, it might sound a little bit hateful, and I didn't come to do that. But these folks and I have heard it for years. Oh, I trust God. I am depending on God, but maybe I don't pray as much as some folks do or read my Bible or get a spiritual. That's a lie. That's all it is. The devil has you deceived. If you think you're really trusting God and you're not a prayer warrior, you don't need to pray without ceasing. You know, I'm not going to pray fanatics over there. You're calling somebody a fanatic right now and you don't know what stress relief all about. Right? You need to get deeper in God. I counsel people that all the time because that's always the answer, and I'll talk to you about it a little bit later. Stress relieving prayer is first dependence upon the Lord. It's going in and saying, I know I can't do it. Now listen, it's not low self-esteem. A lot of people, how could a Christian have low self-esteem? He died for you. I didn't come to preach this tonight, but I'd love to share it. Don't ever devalue yourself. Jesus offered the greatest price ever tendered when he died for you. Your market value, and that's a legal term, is the life of Jesus Christ. He gave his life. He shed his blood for you. So Christianity is not low self-esteem. But if you want to get in the presence of God, acknowledge your dependence upon him. Right? Stress relieving prayer is first dependence upon God. Then secondly and naturally, it's developing a lifestyle. Now we're going to get difficult. In verse number 6, two of the most difficult statements in one verse you'll ever read in the Bible. He starts by saying, be careful for nothing. Is that really possible? And you might not question that in church, but you will later. Yeah. If you're not sitting in your pew question, really don't be careful about anything. Don't let anything worry me. Don't have any anxiety about anything. I should never feel inadequate. And we think about, well, maybe in Paul's day, we won't do it tonight, but we have done it at least once in this series, and we've done it another time. We turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and we get all of those things that Paul went through, and then we can turn in places in the Scripture in his letters where you see that he did go through. Yeah. Besides all the care of the churches, what a tremendous, the thorn in the flesh, what he had been through, I suppose one of those things is going to be our Sunday school lesson. And that was just one of them. That was just one small incident in the life of Paul. All that you say now, there are different set of stresses, no denying that, in our age than there's ever been. I preached in the storehouse 
Yesterday morning, something I preached here in November. What now? Right? When Jesus rose into the clouds, that probably was the greatest what now moment in the history of mankind. But the truth is, we're in a what now moment. What now? Our, our nation, our world, our families, our lives. I'm doing more relationship counseling now this year, probably the last four months than I've done in 40 years. People are going out of their minds, right? So what about not worrying and being anxious about anything? And then the next thing, in everything. Pray about everything. Now, I'll say this, and this doesn't sound like preacher talk, but stay with me. If this was my first sermon here, I don't think I'd say this. But praying about everything is good philosophy. Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. But it's not very good practice, right? Every little thing, right? If I, I got to pray about what the other one is, maybe you ought to. I don't know. <laughs> They just okay, you're driving down the road and there's a curb. Well, I gotta pray or I'm not gonna turn. No, you're gonna run off the road, that's what you're gonna do. Turn the steering wheel. Yeah. Right? If, if you got a job, if it's your job, not go to the fax machine and see what's come into that, and that's your job. And you've got to pray, Lord, I don't know if I should go to this fax machine. You better go to that fax machine, you're gonna lose your job for what? If you're working on a conveyor belt, it's your job to put a feather and a hatch going by, and you stop every time and pray and a hatch will pass you by, you're gonna get fired, you're gonna lose your job. You see, it's silly. What, what does it mean then? Pray about everything? Everything is turned over to God. Yeah. Right? When you prayed about it, you said the blessing. Before you prayed, you stop and pray between every mouthful of food you take and start to death. Yeah. Or everybody else is going to leave the table before you get through. <laughs> right? No, really not everything, but I've just turned everything. I believe that's what the Bible's saying here. Yeah. Now, don't get silly about it. Just turn everything over to God. And you get in the practice of doing that, you'll just automatically, I mean, you're like the, uh, the second, what do they call them, second baseman and help me, some ball player tonight, and shortstop and second baseman, right, that's the keystone uh, uh, of the infield on the baseball team, they just wouldn't turn that double play, they're pitching the ball to each other, and they're, you know, one of the most famous plays in the World Series, one of those A-Rod or G-Rod or B-Rod or C-Rod or somebody, you flip, flip that ball, one of the world, Sterling knows what I'm talking about. Right? You work, you know, God, you'll be working in tandem with God. Yeah. Right? Here comes something, okay, flip it over my team mode over here. He's the big guy anyway, right? Yeah, he's, right? He's on my side, right? I'm going to get it to him. And the quicker I get it to him, the better off I'll be. Turn it over to him because, you know, I wanted to make a, a couple of changes I wanted to make. We had a big baby day and so forth. But I wanted to put this formula up on the screen. You know what stress is? Stress equals our agenda versus God's agenda. If you're a Christian, I believe most of the people come to the house of God tonight. <laughs> you know what we're wound up about? Our agenda versus God's agenda. When your agenda equals God's agenda, stress is diminished. When your agenda becomes God's agenda, stress will be diminished. I'm trying and trying. You know, sometimes I don't think I'm a very good salesman. The people think I have an ulterior motive. I'm just trying to get them in church. Yes, I try to get people in church because it helps you. Oh boy, it helps me. Right? I don't have an ulterior motive in doing that. It'll help you. Right? It'll relieve stress. Do it God's way. Do it God's way. But lest we get too complicated, I meant to put this on the end, but I changed it because I thought right now, after that particular part of the verse, in that particular idea here, stress relieving prayer is developing a lifestyle. Here's the simplest thing. Stress relieving prayer is declaring our love. Amen. Make your prayer about that. Verse number six, this may seem awfully simple, but it says by prayer. Now the word for prayer there is the most often used in the New Testament. It implies adoration, worship, and devotion. Make sure whatever your agenda is, Whatever it is you're praying about, we will get real specific in the next panel. However, whatever it is that you need to take to God in prayer, make sure you use that time to adore, to worship, and be devoted to Him. This is hard to do since it's intimacy, and intimacy is hard to describe. You just do it right. So I, I get up in the morning. doesn't make any difference what time. It's not daylight. doesn't have to be. But you get up when you need to. But the first thing I do is get on my face before God. 
And I begin to just, whatever comes to my heart, thou art wonderful, high and holy, mighty and lifted up. There is none like thee in heaven or in earth. Who like thyself, my God, has taken thee through cloud and sunshine, O oh Lord, abide with me. I think, quote, quote Isaiah chapter 40. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. He has measured the, the mountains and scales and the hills in a balance. He spread out the heavens as a curtain. He said, Hither who shall thou go to the ocean waves and no farther? Just anything you can do to, to, to tell and express the majesty of God. How great. I, I say, Lord, I've come to your presence. That's all I've come for. Later on, I carry requests. I have prayer requests. I do that while I'm walking a couple of miles. If, if I can get through, if I don't, I'm sit down. After I sit down, I take the rest of them. But I use that initial time to do nothing but tell God how wonderful He is, how high He is, how holy He is. Now, I'm not telling you to copy my words. You can if you need my permission, you can. But have you noticed there's a lot of powerful prayers in the Bible where it just says somebody prayed and then God moved? Amen. Now, some of the prayers are, are listed, but I believe the reason all prayers are not listed in the Bible, God doesn't want them to copy them, does to copy them. Just pour your heart out to God. Amen. Worship Him when you pray. Stress relieving prayer is declaring your love to God, right? When I feel love, I'm okay. How about you, right? When you realize, and I don't know why we don't always realize, if you have love in your life, that will relieve your stress. Declare, when you're praying, declare your love for God. Then once you've done that, stress relieving prayer is drawing a list. You ought to do that. Verse number six uses the word, supplication. Now those who would tell you that means fervency, I won't argue with that, but I'm the type person, I'm not Dr. Elvin here tonight, but I dissect the word. If you don't want to know what a word means, look at the root of the word. Supplication, the root word is supply. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You see the same verse says let your request be made known. Amen. Show your confidence in the power of God, the compassion of God, and the concern of God Amen. in your situation. Make yourself a prayer list. Right? I'll be specific. You know, I heard an old story, and I've been sharing it with, I guess, for 40 years. There was a king who went on a particular tour of battle. He had a soldier that showed particular bravery and facility on the battlefield. He wanted to reward him when they got back home. So he called him before him and said, ask me, I'll grant your request. You've distinguished yourself on the battlefield. He asked for a stunning amount of silver and gold, so much so that it scared the treasurers and the advisors around the king that began to tremble. The king smiled and said, he compliments me with his request. Amen. He knows I've got it. He knows I can do it. Are you complimenting God with your request? Make yourself a prayer list. Write it down. You ought to have a prayer journal. They all preach you, you got me. I'm not going to get a team for you. You got to teach me all these things. I need a Thanksgiving journal. Yes, you do. Somebody nod their head. Has anybody started that since I've been preaching about Amen? Hallelujah. Well, that makes me feel good. Right? And then you need a prayer journal. Now, by journal, of course, how many of you have a prayer list? Obviously, I do. I read almost every, every morning, every night. I call it out when I'm walking. But a prayer journal gives you room to make a check or a star or write down something when God answered that prayer. Yes. You see what I'm saying? He's a little preacher. I already work. God, how much better would your day go at break time and lunch time instead of arguing people about Trump and Biden and Nancy Pelosi? <laughs> if you get out your thanks, oh, I'm preaching that. Get out your Thanksgiving journal and your prayer journal and do something with that. Amen. You'd be amazed how much. If you think you've got a minute to sit down once at 12 o'clock and 24 7 news or do this or that, you'd be amazed how much better off you'd be to pull out that Thanksgiving journal and your prayer journal. Amen. Make your list. Keep a journal. Make it personal, professional, and profound. I'm going to talk just a few minutes about that. Personal. Don't forget to put yourself on there. The Bible says in the book of James, that great passage about prayer in chapter 5, pray one for another. It starts with one. 
If you're not praying for yourself, you're asking a miss. The Bible teaches pray for yourself. Include yourself. Certainly your family. Talk about their request. Anything about their personality traits, you see, you wait till it's too late. Don't wait till they're already on drug. Now, if they are, keep praying for them. Yeah. But right? If you notice something unusual about their personality traits, and they got too old, you can't beat them out of it, or, or argue them out of it, or scream at them, pray them out of it. Amen. Pray them out. Amen. I believe in the power of prayer. Don't Amen. you? Amen. Put your family, their personality traits that you want to see change. If you want to see them be well adjusted, do you pray about that? Because if you don't, they ain't going to be. Amen. You say, well, I'm not going to get them on the tire anymore. You just send them out there and you just call their name and then help Bobby. You know, say, I'm not minimizing, I'm not trying to be cynical here. But you need to pray about Bobby's problems. Right? right? If he's showing tendencies that you don't like, let me tell you what y'all do about them. Put them down in your prayer journal and pray about that. Amen. Right? Amen. Are you with me? Am I teaching anything? Right? Make it personal. Make it professional. Pray about how you do your job. You may not come out. I'm talking about what do you do for a living? You're a professional. Did you know you're a professional? Yes. If you do something for a living, somebody pays you for it, you are a professional. Right? Pray about that. I think a Christian ought to be the best in the building. Amen. Christian workers should be the best workers in the workforce. Nobody like it. I want to be a better preacher. I want to be a better. This is not ego. I want to continue to improve. I want a greater command of the Word of God. I want to be able to explain it in a way that everybody can understand it. And that's going to take the power of God. Pray. Make your prayer list personal, professional, and make it profound. Get deep. Ask the Lord for a deeper experience with Him. When Jesus taught us to pray, He said the first two words, Our Father. Don't forget who you're talking to. Right? Who, who are you talking to? Amen? Most my children generally, right? Now let me tell you differently, but they don't when they come to me, they generally get what they want. Unless I think it's going to hurt them. Right? My heavenly father owns the cattle on a thousand years. He loved me beyond anybody has ever loved me. Amen. When I talk to him, I'm talking to my father. He says, Let your request be made known unto don't forget who you're talking to. Fresh believing prayer is dependence upon the Lord, developing a lifestyle, declaring our love, is joining the list, and it's also displaying our loyalty. In verse number six, the Bible says, with thanksgiving. Notice it doesn't say and thanksgiving. There are a lot of ands in this verse. But thanksgiving is not something added on. It says that, ver that word with is very important. Thanksgiving can be done throughout it all. That is the vehicle of prayer. A good translation is by thanksgiving you highlight your request. You know what a highlighter is. How do we use it? That means attention. Right? You get a piece of mail that says attention Bobby Allen Parker. That's something you need to look at. All right? When you pray with thanksgiving that saying attention Jesus. Right? You're sending that specifically to him. What do you do with your highlighter? Especially powerful and precious passages in your Bible, what do you do with them? Because you don't be able to see them. That's what you're doing with your prayer request. When you do it with Thanksgiving, that's what you're doing. And what else do you do with them? You, you all ever sign a contract? You have pages that sign here, sign here, sign here, and you look at it, you know, read it. Prayer is your contract with God. And when you highlight it, you know what you'll do? He's already ready. He knew what you needed before you asked. You know what he said? Yeah. Right. But you'll sign it right in the place. If you, I got boy, go chill about this. That's your contract with God. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. I want to make a key statement concerning thanksgiving when you pray. If I've said this before, you need to hear it again. Remembering what God has done in the past will build your confidence in the future. Remembering what God has done in the past, praying with thanksgiving, will build your confidence about what He'll do in the future. Now, this is personal. I try to start every prayer with thanksgiving. Every single one. 
I want you to consider that for a minute. In death, standing over a dead body of somebody's loved one, maybe mine, I begin prayers with thanksgiving. Surgery, before surgery, somebody's scared, you're going to sleep, and they're going to cut you open. Whatever the situation. Relationship counseling. When people are screaming at each other. Marriages and homes about to break up. I begin to pray with Thanksgiving. Maybe it sounds crazy in some situations, but that's what the Bible says. Yeah. With Thanksgiving. Now listen to these. Here's what you can always do. Maybe you don't see something in that particular situation, but you can always thank God for His love. Yeah. If you let the devil convince you to doubt God's love, you have Sometimes you'll be tempted to do that when the dearest person to you in this world passes on. You'll be tempted to question God's love. God's love. Or when you get a, a doctor's report that you didn't want, and we, we've had bad news this week, you know, and we've had good news. But you'll be tempted to say, if God loved me, why would he put me through this? If you doubt God's love, you have it. When you're in those stressful situations, maybe you don't even think you deserve it. Thank God for His love. Then secondly, you can thank God for His presence. And I've learned this. Even if you don't feel His presence right then, if you'll thank Him for His presence, you soon will. I said, you soon will. Boy, He shows up. Then you ought to thank Him for His authority. Do you see how much that's all? If you are walking through the valley of the shadow of death, I had this happen. Let's see, how long ago was it? I see if I said names, you could have to remember how many years ago this has been. But I, there was a precious lady in our church that it, it was obvious that her life was getting away. She had a daughter that was a, a nurse. And honestly, if you're a you say if you hear her tell she must have been the nurse of all nurses. So she wanted everything that was going on and those appendages and fingers began to get blue and uh, they won't be in a few hours now, and she lives on days and days and days. And I sat there with that nurse, and I said, Honey, sometimes God just shows us that He's God. That's right. And that's the most important thing we need to know right now. Your loved ones are going to, most of them are going to, especially your parents, people older than you, they're going to have that as a minute done for but what you need to know while you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death is God's authority. Amen. He's in control of every business. There's nothing that will relieve. It's not going to go away. You love that person, you're going to hurt. Right? Jesus wept at the tomb of Lazarus, and he knew he was going to call him off. That's right. Amen. Death hurts. I know that it does. But acknowledging the authority of God relieves stress like nothing else. And by the way, can I just say this in passing? In relationship counseling, as much as I've done, generally, people are selfish. Usually both parties. Sometimes one or the other, but most of the time both. As soon as I can get somebody to admit, you know what, I've been selfish. I'm not giving it up. I wanted everything my way. As soon as people stop being selfish, they can get reunited. If they decide never, that's the reason for problems in the church. Somebody wanted it their way. How you have it their way? Right? They've interpreted the scripture, misinterpreted the scripture, twisted it around and throw it on somebody else. Yeah, uh, and they'll try to quote scripture and knock somebody else down, they're just being themselves. Amen. Yes, amen. There's nothing like acknowledging God's authority amen. to take care of that. Right? It's all in God's hands. Thank God for that. If you'll do that, stress will diminish. Amen. Then you'll be delivering a legacy. The last thing about Relieving stress through prayer in verse number seven. And I told you when we read our text, that is a conjunction. It's not. Certainly I have quoted this scripture separately. I do it every morning when I'm praying for heaven. Lord, let the peace of God, which pass up all understanding, keep our heart and mind through Christ Jesus. And God answers that prayer. But you know what? It's not just mine. She has to pray about it too. So I'm, I'm not telling you you can't quote verse seven by itself. I have all. But don't forget, this is a conjunction. 
in verse number 6. It's connected. If you'll do that, if you'll take those steps in prayer, approach your prayer life that way, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. You're familiar with that phrase. It literally means it extends beyond the human intellect. Don't try to make sense out of it. The peace of God, if you'll approach God in this way, in this sixth principle way, you'll find the peace of God which extends beyond human intellect. Few Christians find that. Few people find that. Now, I'm going to ask you to raise your hands. I just would ask you to be honest. How many times do you ask yourself, why am I so calm? Never. Very seldom. Most people don't. If I've ever done it, I don't do it often. Why with all this going on am I so calm? We don't say that much. We usually say, why am I so nervous? What's wrong with it? We try to take a vacation. If you get in the airport and the flight's delayed, you're going to sit there. You don't want to get on a plane in the first place. Right? You're trying to relax. That's the reason you're going. Right? Or, or you get back from taking a couple of days off and you've got shingles popping out here and here. I thought I was relaxing. That's what I was trying to do. That's the kind of people we are. Right? Exercise this system of prayer and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, yeah. shall keep. Everybody say keep. keep. Some of you heard me say this before. The word, the Greek word there is guard. Paul used a military metaphor. It's not just it will guard. There is a guardian. That's what he said. Here's, he's literal about it. It's just like a military guard. And we're talking, stress is what we're talking about, so that's a, a war. How many of you know that stress is a war? Amen. Right? So you've got, you're in a, in a war zone. And there's a guardian. What is that guardian? If I had a rifle, I'd have brought, I don't mess up your guitar here. Is that thing one of the, all right, here we go. I'm going to shoot you on your guitar. Right? All right, here he is, right? He's done, you know. He's going back and forth. He's, got, he's serious. He's got a firearm here. And he's my, that's what Paul said. This is your life. And there's stress. Seems like he couldn't avoid it. But here he is. So there's an intruder coming. That intruder is stress. Oh, who goes there? Identify yourself. Is that the, is that the deal? Is that what he does? Is that what a guard does? And the stress says, I'm stressed. No, no, no. No admittance. You can't come across this line right here. Right? This, this is the peace of God over here that passes understanding. And since it is, God has posted me here. You ever hear that story about the Roman city of Pompeii? I could put my gun somewhere. The Roman city of Pompeii. No, I'm going to keep it for a while. It's a spear now. Right? <laughs> the, volcan the volcanic ash covered that city so quickly that hardly any of the people stayed. But some of them did it. But there's excavation, I mean a century later, that was done that revealed some interesting things. They found the body of a Roman centurion. The city's in Rome. They found the body of a Roman centurion. Erect. Standing straight, holding the clutches of that skeleton fingers, holding the spear. The only answer for that, he's not leaving his post. He's not. He was faithful to the imperial seal. Let me tell you something about that guard. When the Bible says there's a guard, he's not leaving. It doesn't make any difference how hot it gets, or how bad it gets, or what goes on. He is not leaving. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep or guard your hearts and minds. Yeah. Now we've studied, don't you think this is, I don't you think we've convoluted it? Because what we've studied, Proverbs 23 and 7, what the mind can see and the heart believes, the body will achieve. Are you glad the body doesn't achieve everything the mind can see? Yeah. Woo! 
You know what, they, I don't have time to do yet here, but I, I, I thank God for the, the way I was brought up. But you know I was brought up in the holiness of denomination. You know what they told me? If you thought it, you might as well have went on and done it. I praise God I haven't done everything I thought about. Amen. The heart, right? That piece of God, your heart, it's not going to, yes, you're going to think about something that makes you anxious. You're not going to stop that. That's not what this series is about. But that will never make it down into your heart. If you, you go to God in these six ways, take these six steps, then the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds. Because your mind will finally, it'll take a whole lifetime, but your mind will start saying, you know what, he ain't going to do that anyway. The devil will abide, I'm not saying he'll be completely gone, but listen, there are some issues the devil can't play with. Amen. He doesn't convince me I'm not saved anymore. He can't do that. And he's not going to convince me to turn back. It's not worthwhile. Well, there's some issues I have defeated the devil over. I've got him enough in my heart to have persuaded my mind. It'll keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Through Christ Jesus. You see, he's the door. He's the gate. He said, I'm the door. Jacob said, this is the gate of heaven. It can't pass through it. Anything that gets to you has got to come through him. It doesn't have to. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. It's your choice. Your agenda versus God. This is an illustration. I did this years and years ago. And I brought two lamps to my house. And I broke them and they never worked again. So I didn't bring two lamps tonight. Because I think you can, you can look at this and get the illustration without them being lamps. I heard about a ship that was traveling during the storm. The storm was severe. Went over against the coast, but it was a treacherous coastline. You know what helps those souls? That old lighthouse. Amen. He was going down that coast, and there were rocks on the edge of it, and a coral reef, and he saw a fort. But in that fort were two lighthouses, just where those microphones came from. He started down the coastline, and he calls in on the radio, and he said, Where do I turn? I try to go between those two lanes and those. You do that, you go on the rocks. He said, I'll tell you what, dude. Just keep sailing. Somebody say keep sailing. Keep sailing. Keep sailing until those two lights line up, and then you can turn into four. This is your will and God's. You keep on sailing until they line up. Boy, I got no way to see a punch right now. Just keep on sailing until they line up. I'm not here to criticize you tonight. Just, just keep sailing. Keep praying. Keep doing what God said to do. And when you get to that point, when you get your agenda lined up and God's agenda, you'll find a safe home, even in the storm. Stress, relief, proof, prayer. Would you bow your head and stand? I thank the Lord for what He's shown us tonight. Can you truly say that your life is stress-free? It's all the time. Lord, I am your child, and I know you hear your children. I'm now going to begin to exercise Stress relieving prayer. Do you need that tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. People are coming. Don't be left out. I preach the word. People are still coming. You don't have to be left out.
believe power will be shown. I believe we'll get closer to your will, closer to relieving stress, Lord. I don't know that it'll all go away. As I said when I started this, if we can just slow our folks down a little bit and relieve some of that stress so we can bring you and let the Holy Ghost bring the breath of life into us, then we can win this better. We can live a better Christian life. We can win our families. We can be a better influence. We can have a stronger church. Thank you. 